Welcome back, everyone. It's the Bourbon Judge. So we are back at it with, uh, this is actually going to be a fun episode. I'm looking forward to this one. But before we dive into it, um, a couple updates. Let's call some housekeeping things. Number one, uh, just updates in terms of like barrel picks. So I actually have a barrel pick coming in this week. Um, Starlight Honey Finish. So me and some of my patrons, we all went back to uh, to Starlight a few months ago and did a barrel pick of their Honey Finish bourbon. And uh, it's in stock, it's coming in. Um, so that is gonna be released actually this week to my patrons. And if there are any bottles left over, of course, it'll then go to uh, everyone watching the channel, all the subscribers and so forth. But that's going to be a hot ticket item. And it was, let's just say, I think my patrons and I all agreed, it was amazing, a phenomenal uh, barrel pick. Uh, but then I have a, a few others that are set to come out in the next few weeks and then even in a few months as well. Also, I'm going to Kentucky uh, later this week as well for more barrel picks. So two more barrel picks. So a lot of barrel picks in the in the works. If you're interested in becoming a patron, go ahead and check me out on Patreon and uh, appreciate the support and events. Also, speaking of patrons, I want to give a huge shout out to my good friends and my newest patrons, my good friend Kyle A and Terry B. So Kyle and Terry, thanks for supporting the Bourbon Judge. Appreciate you gentlemen for helping for all this to come to fruition, as well as for all my patrons. Really do appreciate all the support, all the love. We honestly have a blast, no matter if it's our contest, Discord. Um, I mean, just everything that we do, like just interacting, meetups and so forth. Always good times. So I appreciate my, uh, let's call it the Judge family, if you will, for our patrons. Thank you so much. All right, so today's episode again actually came from my patrons uh so I, I, I know a lot of my patrons saw uh i think a couple of different channels actually did this like you know the best bottle at every single price point right like 20 to 30 all the way up to like 100 or 150 if you will so we're gonna have a little fun today and we're gonna uh, do the exact same thing so we're gonna go ahead and pick out the best bottles at each price point most of these you will see are bottles that you can actually find on the shelf, which is pretty cool. Uh, not everything's super allocated. I think of my entire list, only like two are hardly like hard to find, hard sought after bottles. But the others, for the most part, they actually kind of sit on shelves, which is pretty cool. So for the most part, again, these are bottles that you can find on the shelf with the exception of just like two or three. Um, but I'm gonna break it down by price point, the reason why I selected it. And uh, again, hey, like always, let me know and drop your comments of what you think should be in the list or maybe a bottle that I missed. Cool? All right. Oh, man, this is fun. Whew. I need some whiskey before we start. <laughs> mm. 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 Wow, that is good. That's on the list also. All right, so let's start with the $20 to $30 category. So $20 to $30, when you think of $20 to $30, you think of budget friendly, but you also want the whiskey to be good. So the bottle that I picked for $20 to $30, this is, I think still to this day, it's a $25 bottle. And the good news, it comes in a full liter size. Yes, early times bottled in bond. Now I know there was a lot of, you know, let's call it feedback and people saying, ah, oh, you know, back when it was Brown Foreman, it was phenomenal. Now it's with Sazerac, it's not as good. But there's people on the opposite side, which is me. Uh, I do think that the brown format, as well as the Sazerac, at the end of the day, this is a phenomenal bottle. For $25 for a full liter, I mean, it's it's quintessential early times bottled and bond whiskey. It's so good for $25. It's hard to beat the quality of this whiskey at the price point as well. If it was more expensive, sure, maybe you can you can kind of say, you know what, I don't know, Judge, if I agree with that. But for $25, you really can't beat it. Again, these are just my opinions. Feel free to chime in and let me know what are some of your thoughts on bottles in the $20 to $30 range. There, let's keep this train moving. $30 to $40, a Brown Foreman legend. Typically, you can find this bottle, even though this is $30 to $40 bottle, you typically can find it for about $31, $32. Depending on what state you find it in, you might have to pay a couple of dollars for tax, so maybe $33, $34. Bucks. But the whiskey is just quintessential brown foreman. Tons of leather, oak, sweet, spicy. It is absolutely an amazing bottle. Cooper's Craft, bottled and bond, 100 proof. Folks, 
I'm telling you, this is truly one of the best bottles on the market that gets overlooked by so many people. And it's one that will, I mean, again, kind of like early times, I'll always have it in my house. I mean, I have to. It's, it's just such great quality whiskey. You can trust it, you know, bottle after bottle. I've had numerous different bottles of this. And what I love about it is consistent. I've never had a bad bottle of Cooper's Craft bottled in bond. Never. And I mean, never. All right, let's move that back this way. So that's Cooper's Craft. That's the $30 to $4 category. Oh, boy. $40 to $50. Now, this one is kind of the opposite, where this was on the lower end, end of the spectrum for $30 to $40. This one's on the a higher end from a price standpoint of $40 to $50. I just saw this bottle by me, literally, at least in my state in Delaware, for $49.99. And when I think of this bottle, this is actually what I'm sipping right now. I had to include it. Maybe in your state, it's like $52, $53. But by me, it's $49.99. One of the best rides on the market, hands down, dollar for dollar, all day long, Sagamore Spirit, the Double Oaked. Oh, gosh. This bottle, I mean, if you are a true bourbon drinker and you're looking to make the leap of faith over to a rye whiskey, you want something that kind of hits your palate similar to a bourbon. This Double Oaked Rye, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's everything. You will, you will not be disappointed with this bottle here. Absolutely one of the best rides on the market, especially at the price point, $49.99 by me. Um, and it's just flat out amazing. I've had so many bottles, again, consistency. You'll see with every item that I have, the reason why I picked these is because they are always very consistent. In fact, I don't think I've ever had a bad bottle of almost any of these brands, at least the ones that I picked. All right. So that is Sagmore, $40 to $50. Oh boy, we're starting to heat up now. $50 to $60 range. Slightly a little harder to find, but you can honestly find them. Just put a little bit of effort into it. You may have to go to the next state over, but you can definitely get it. Not allocated, doesn't come out. There's no secret handshakes, none of that nonsense. But going in the $50 to $60 range, this distillery has a hell of a brand. Funny enough, this is the distillery that I'm actually going out to do a barrel pick at this week. Interesting. <laughs> Russell's Reserve. Oh my gosh. The Russell single barrel is just, I mean, we're talking about the Russell's family. I mean, come on, right? I mean, everything that the Russell's touches is pretty much gold, literally pretty much gold. And every single barrel that I've had, they're either good or great. They range from good to great. You never have like a bad Russell's Reserve single barrel. At least I have not personally, but fits right in that 50 to $60 bottle range uh, or price point rather. Great quality whiskey and you can trust it each and every bottle that you get. That's the cool thing about it. Oh man, this is gonna be a fun barrel pick. I can't wait. Can't wait, patrons, it's coming. It's coming. Um, all right, three quick easy favors. Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. Let me know, again, throughout this entire episode when you're dropping a comment, let me know what are some of the bottles that you think maybe I missed that I should have put on the list. Last but not least, please make sure you're all subscribed to the channel and hit the bell so you get a notification each and every time I release new content. Cool? All right. So that is the uh, $50 to $60 bottle. $60 to $70. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. Because... I had to pick from two different, I guess, products that they make. I knew which sub brand it was going to be, but I had to pick between A versus B. And I went with option B. Even though option A was right there, you might, I'm sure you probably figured it out already. Old Forester 1920. Oh, man. Old Forester, Old Forester, Old Forester. <laughs> <laughs> Need I say more? But honestly, I was torn between Old Forester 1920 and Old Forester 1910. In theory, you really can't go wrong with either one. I like, for me, you guys all know, I'm a proof guy. I love everything that's a little bit higher proof, if not cast strength. And while this is, you know, obviously always comes in at exactly 115 proof, it's on the upper end from a proof standpoint. But for a $60 to $70 bottle, Old Forester, I mean, they just keep hitting it out of the park. I mean, again, consistency. Great bottles, day in, day out, great brand, great reputation. 
and it's exactly what you want. It's silky, it's creamy, it's powerful. It has that leather, that caramel kind of profile that you always get from a traditional Old Forester product and always amazing. And I mean, always amazing. All right, let's move on to 70 to $80. Ooh, we got some heavy hitters here, boy. Goodness. Mm. All right, 70 to 80. Make this like a little W almost in a way. 70 to 80. So I think of a bottle that has a ton of character. It's a brand that has a great reputation. They always put out solid whiskey. You can always trust the brand. You can trust the whiskey as well. And it has a nice kick to it. And you know exactly what you're getting with every uh, bottle that you get. Obviously, there are different ones between some single barrels versus the ones that come out a couple times per year. But I don't know how you can even have this list if you do not include Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This one I just happened to pull out. Wow, I went old school. Damn. This is the C920. Woo! <laughs> so this is like truly like one of the best of the best uh, from, from previous releases. But ser seriously, I mean, great quality whiskey. Cast strength always packs a nice punch, but you always know what you're getting with the quality of the whiskey as well, which I love about that. So when I thought about this price point, I'm like, you know what? It, it has to be. It has to be Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. All right, so where are we at right now? Uh, we are currently at the 70 to 80. All right, so now we're going into the 80 to 90 dollar price point. Woo! 80 to 90. I guess the whole uh, the judge loving cast strength options is definitely a, a true statement, but I'm changing up a little bit. For my $80 to $90 category, of course all of these are pretty much big brands, right? Even Sagborn now they 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 were a craft distillery many years ago, but now they're 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 big time now, obviously. For 80 to 90, I wanted to incorporate a craft distillery, and I think this craft distillery is number one. I love them because they do everything. I mean, they grow their own grains, they distill it, they age it, they bottle it, they do it all in Nevada. Also, one of my upcoming barrel picks that I've already, we've already picked this one before. This is the joint barrel pick that I did with uh, SLB Drinks, my good friends, uh, Trent and Kurt, and our, the lovely couple, Josh and Aaron. So we did a barrel pick of Frey Wrench. This is not the pick, that one's coming out in the next probably like month, month and a half. But this is just another single barrel that I got from um, actually when I was out in Nevada at the Total Wine Store. I think this cost me like 85, 88 bucks. But this is a Frey Wrench Cast Strength Bourbon. If you've not had a Frey Wrench Cast Strength single barrel bottle, please make sure you add that to your to-do list. <laughs> I'm giving you a homework assignment. What I love about Frey Wrench, their bourbons and even their ryes, there are two things. They are actually three things. They're sweet. They're spicy and they are powerful. They are truly powerful, but you can always tell the love and the effort um, that they're putting into their whiskey over at Free Ranch. So for the $80, $90 cal category, absolutely. That will be in my list every single day. For this $90 to $100 tier, I talked about, I did say earlier that there are going to be a few bottles that are a little bit harder to get, right? Like even like this Frey Wrench, you can find it typically on their website. You can even go like on Sailbox, but you can still find it. This next bottle, I will definitely admit, it's a little harder to find, but I typically do find it for about anywhere from $90 to $100, typically about $98, $97, typically in Delaware, once per year, typically. A little harder to find. A little bit more expensive, obviously, it's almost at $100, 98 bucks. But this is one of my favorite brands, flat out. And I love, even though I'm a bourbon guy, this rye is absolutely perfect for me. Notice I did not pick the 10 year version of this, I picked just a standard Michter's barrel strength rye. This bottle to me, it checks every single category for the judge. Barrel strength, sweet, spicy. The brand has a phenomenal reputation, right? Dan McKee, the master distiller over at uh, Michter's, Andrew Wilson, the master of maturation. They are just, they're just like scientists, honestly. I don't know what, what they're doing, but every single barrel strength rye that I get is always flat out amazing. And I mean amazing. It's everything. Wow. So that was the $90 to $100 category. So we have three categories left. 
100 to 125, 125 to 150, and then 150 plus. Here we go. Mm. All right, let's move this uh, gavel over. The final three bottles. So when we're talking about a 100 to 125 dollar bottle, this is starting to get a little bit expensive, right? We're at the expensive price point now. You want a home run. So every time I go to Kentucky, the probably honestly, even though I love all these distilleries, but the one that I go to the first, the first distillery I always go to each every time I go to Kentucky, because I know they have the best single barrels that they only release at their distillery. They're always about $120, so it does fit into this $100 to $125 category. Peerless. Peerless as a brand, as a up and coming craft distillery, but they're, they're kind of mainstream now. They are truly putting out, literally, some of the best single barrels you will ever find on the market. Fair enough. I mean, truly, absolutely amazing whiskey. 125 to 150, whoo! We are getting expensive now. But if you're getting expensive, you probably want a brand. This is an up and coming brand. Might be a little bit of a surprise for some people. Up and coming brand, but they are putting out some massive age statements. I've had them on the channel twice during two different live streams. And I'm telling you, I'm a big fan of my buddy, Nick Taylor over at Found North. This is batch seven, but you can probably honestly put any batch that Found North has at the top of this list. But batch seven, which by the way is still available, is literally the truth. Try this. I'm not even saying try it at the bar. If you can go online to their website, go to Sealbox, wherever you can get it, buy this bottle. I can guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. I've had this bottle for two weeks and it's almost gone. It's that damn good. What falls in the 150 plus category? Woo! So $150 plus. Let's just say this whiskey packs the biggest punch of them all. A little bit more expensive. It's probably right at $150 on the dot. Maybe like $155. Harder to find. So of all these, the Mictors and this last one, probably the hardest to definitely find. But it was my number one whiskey of 2022 for a reason. It's essentially sourced Barton whiskey, but aged in this case, 15 years. This is Lucky 7, the proprietor. Oh, I'm gonna put this one right here because it belongs on his own little pedestal. <laughs> I'm not trying to show off, there, there are no guns here. Um, but seriously, Lucky 7, the proprietor, let's put it up front. Let's just give it a nice little bow. That whiskey is just so damn good. Hey folks, appreciate the love and support as always. Uh, looking forward to some more, uh, some fun barrel picks. Like I said earlier, I have coming up. These are the bottles that I have in my, I think at every price point, the best bottles, pound for pound, dollar for dollar. Drop me a comment, hit the like button. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Until the next time, peace, cheers, most important, salute. Take care.